So we're going to make some baby footprint sugar cookies. <laughs> So welcome to my kitchen, welcome back to my channel. So I'm continuing the series on ways to make baby shower items and do it frugally. So we're going to make some baby footprint sugar cookies. These are little miniature footprints, so I'm excited to show you the recipe. It's very simple and easy, and I think the outcome's gonna be really, really cute. So the first step is we have to make our dough and it's gonna need to chill in the fridge for an hour. I'm really excited for you to see these though and I'm excited to see how these cookie cutters work. All right, so everything in this recipe tonight, I'm gonna double because I wanna be able to make double the amount of dough, but I'll give you the recipe for the single batch and then I'll just double it as I go. But this is a single recipe. It really depends on how you're making your cookies, what you're doing with them, how many cookies it's going to yield. And we're using a much smaller cutter, but I have two little footprints, so it'll make the left and the right foot. So you just kind of have to adjust and decide for yourself, but because I'm making them for a baby shower, I wanna make sure there's enough cookies for everybody to First go. thing that we're gonna need for our recipe tonight is a cup of sugar and one egg. Now, like I said, I'm gonna double it, so I'm gonna go with two cups of sugar and two eggs. But for a single recipe, one cup of sugar, one egg is all you need. And you wanna put that into a large bowl. And I got an eggshell, I thought I had looked, I got an eggshell in. So if you didn't know, you can actually take the shell of your egg and scoop your eggshell that you got into it out. I always keep a rag on hand to wipe my hands off on while I'm cooking because they get super messy or if my phone rings, I'm able to check it, which I'm gonna get out of the way so it doesn't get sticky and dirty. Okay, and then a cup of sugar as well. And this is just granulated sugar, not brown sugar. Just dump that right in. I think I was supposed to beat my egg first, so make sure you beat your egg. I'm gonna beat the second one, so that way I get, <laughs> get the recipe correct. So I'm gonna grab a fork and do this, and see that's why our towel is really handy. And I'm having to step over my dog, you guys, because he's laying right at my feet while I'm cooking. And I think, I'm actually using my dishwasher. This is like my go-to countertop and I washed all my dishes earlier and I have more to go from dinner, but with seven kids, and we also had a guest here today, my daughter Ireland's best friend was here with us. So he is up on his hind legs, thinking I'm making him something, Reddington, you can't have any, our dog, well, one of our dog's names is Reddington, the other one is Duke. But anyway, with an extra guest here today, um, we had extra dishes as well. Not too many extra though. And with Matt not being here, my husband, because he was traveling today, it really wasn't like a big difference. So we just always have a lot of dishes and usually I do them twice a day, but today I was really busy with homeschool and then of course with party planning, making sure the house was kept up. And after a day of homeschooling, our house can be a disaster from one of the main rooms all the way to the kitchen, one room to the next, kitchen, living room, dining room, foyer, that's the way it is in a large family. So I'm gonna add another cup of sugar to this, but like I said, this is a doubled recipe. So don't do that. Don't add that extra cup unless you wanna double it. So the next thing you're gonna need is a cup of butter margarine. If you use sticks like I do, I love these for cooking. I'm using margarine tonight. It works just as good. Um, the only thing I've really found that I strictly use butter on is pecan pie I'm for using real butter. But two sticks of margarine need to go in this and they should be softened first. Now, it does say that you can do, the recipe calls for doing egg and vanilla together and whipping them till they're fluffy and then the sugar and the butter together. But you can do it either way and I messed it up while I was trying to film this for you but it will work out because I've made it both ways, so. Anyway, you wanna soften them, so I'm gonna get the two sticks of butter. First, I'm gonna break down my boxes, though. I had to pull, I found an extra one empty in the refrigerator. Do you guys ever find that? Like, when you have other people living with you, 
or do you leave them yourself and then have to clean them out later? But yeah, I'll find empty boxes in my refrigerator all the time. Anyway, I'm gonna break these down for recycling. Um, put them in my recycling bin and try not to throw my butter all over the house. I thought this one was empty. So I'm gonna put these back and I'm gonna soften this butter and then I'll show you what we're gonna do next. So about 38 seconds in the microwave, melted these beautifully. I'm gonna add the cup of butter. Like I said, it's two sticks, but I'm actually going to add two more for my double recipe. So I've got my butter and sugar and egg all in here. So I'm gonna mix this before I add the vanilla. This really isn't the way the recipe calls for it, but it really does work either way for this part of the recipe anyway. Um, now the flour and stuff, I know that's really important to mix in a certain way, but this will be okay. I don't know if maybe it'll take a little lightness out, but last night or last time I did this, I didn't really notice a difference at all. So I think they'll be all right. Anyway, I'm mixing this part up and it should start to look and I'm just using my spatula to do this so I can make sure that everything's folded together well. And it's pretty easy to mix with the spatula at this point. My dogs are begging really bad. They're trying to get me to feed them this and they have no idea. They do not want what I'm making right now. This would be so not good for them. The egg maybe, but I don't know about all that sugar and butter. Okay. So it's not gonna be perfect. It's still gonna be a little bit lumpy with butter and stuff. You'll be able to work that out of your mixture after you get the other stuff in, but I like using the spatula because a lot of sugar sticks to the bottom and you wanna get that mixed in really well. So anyway, that's about what it should look like. Now we're gonna add the vanilla. So this recipe calls for one tablespoon of vanilla extract. So I always pour it away from my bowl because my hands are just not that steady. And I don't wanna to get too much in there. I'd rather have to clean up a little bit of a mess. I think this is the end of this thing of vanilla. I've had this forever, you guys. All right, I'm gonna go get some more vanilla so I can top this off. Like I said, it's a double recipe. That's why I'm putting the second one in. Um, and I'm gonna stick this in the sink to recycle. I'm huge on recycling these days. I never used to be, but I am now. So if you hear me say I'm recycling it a lot, that's why. Anyway, I'm gonna get some more vanilla and then hopefully I can do this and not spill it while I find my other thing of vanilla. Okay, so I found my new thing of vanilla. Yay! And actually coming up here, as soon as I get my hands on all of the ingredients, I'm gonna show you how to make, this is imitation vanilla, but I really prefer um, real vanilla extract, um, but it's super expensive. So I'm going to show you how to make a real vanilla extract um, recipe and um, how it's actually a starter and you can keep using it. I actually saw a woman that did it and she's had her vanilla starter that she just keeps refilling for like 30 years. So I'm gonna show you guys what I learned from that and we're gonna try it. But it takes six months, you guys, from the time you start it before you can use it. The longer it's aged, the better it is. So. Anyway, we're gonna mix in this vanilla, like I said, one tablespoon of vanilla for this recipe. And just mix it right in. Oh, that smells so good, it smells heavenly. Seems like a lot of vanilla, doesn't it? Mmm, smells so good. I wish you could smell this. You gotta make this with me. You gotta make it with me so you can smell it. Mmm, that is so good. Yeah, if you're making this, at home, make sure you pause along so you can watch it and make the recipe with me because it is worth it. This is a really good sugar cookie recipe. I prefer a little bit of sugar on top of it though, I think, because it is, it's a really light sugar cookie recipe, you guys. But we did find something out on New Year's Eve. It is great dipped in champagne. So try that out. We're gonna add our flour and our baking soda, and I'm not really particular. I use up what I have. I always check for sales. Um, so whatever the best deal is on flour, I think I pretty much always stick to standard baking soda because it's usually a good deal at its regular price. So when I catch it on sale, that's a good thing too. But I'm not particular about those types of baking supplies. So you're gonna need a smaller bowl to do this. 
um, because you want to do it separate from your butter and vanilla. And I'm going to show you this mixture. And I'm still having to step over dogs who are laying on the floor staring at me while I'm cooking. Anyway, you're going to want to, um, it's going to look like this. So should look something similar to that. If you don't want to see the butter lumps in it, but they're okay, they'll mix out in kneading and in rolling. Um, you could melt your butter a little bit longer, wouldn't hurt it. And I actually heard something on a video that I was watching one day. I actually think it might, I think it might have been a, like a tastier Buzzfeed video. It was something on Facebook, and um, they had shown if you overcook your butter a little bit, not too much to where you're scorching it, but you really cook it, it's supposed to add a really great flavor to your cookies, especially a chocolate chip cookie. I have not tried it, so I can't speak on it, but that's something I've heard. For this recipe, you need two and a quarter cups of flour. So let's go ahead and add that. And it doesn't say anything about sifting it, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do it the standard way, and I'll probably combine these two bags, but I wanna use up the end of this one. And if I didn't know how quickly I was gonna be going through this flour, I might actually just put it in a bowl, because I don't wanna like, you know, sometimes you can get those little flower bugs, I think they're called weevils or something when your flour gets too old. I think that's what it's from anyway. So I generally don't combine my sugar unless I know I'm gonna be using it really quickly. So one, and it's, I think I said two and a half cups. It's two and a quarter cups of flour that you're gonna want. Two, now I'm doubling the recipe, so I'm gonna do four and a half cups, but it's two and a quarter, four and a half if you're doubling. Need a bigger bowl. Let's see. And there is four. Ooh, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. We'll see. Let me get my spoon out. Ooh, I think that's gonna be. I'm gonna grab a bigger bowl. I don't think that's gonna work out for me. This is a secondary bowl that I use. I love this thing. My mom gave it to me years ago, and I love it. A lot of times I'll use it for salads and stuff because in our family, a big bowl like this is perfect for salad. Sometimes if Matt is making, Matt is my husband, if he is making like a, I don't know, like a kind of like a fluff dessert or something, this works perfect. Okay, so like I said, two and a quarter cups, but I'm doubling the recipe, so four and a half for me. And that's not quite a half a cup. I like to be really exact on my measurements when I'm cooking. And then you're gonna need a teaspoon of sugar, or not sugar, I'm sorry. You're gonna need a teaspoon of baking soda for this recipe. So I'm doubling two teaspoons, but one for the standard recipe. This box of baking soda might have seen better days. It's gotten really clumpy. I should probably, I get a lot of moisture in this kitchen. It's not very well ventilated. Our house is well over a hundred years old. It was actually built in the 1800s and it needs a lot of updating and this kitchen is in desperate need of an update, but we need to get a roof on first, so. So you then you just mix that together and then once you have it, Mix pretty well. I mean, it doesn't have to be. You just want to get it. Oh. <laughs> and of course, I'm wearing a brown sweater, so everything's going to stick to it. I said I was going to run to the gas station while I was waiting for this to set in the fridge because I really want a soda. It's like 10.30 at night and I'm cooking, but my youngest is in bed, and this is a good time to get this type of cooking done when I'm really trying to focus. I like to let him help me a lot. But when I'm trying to do a super focused cooking or for some type of event like this, there's not much room for error with the time constraints. So, all right. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this to the bowl, probably about a quarter of the mixture. And then I'm gonna mix it in, just kind of fold it. I was teaching my nine-year-old that trick and she's really picked up on it well with baking. Um, I've been trying to, in our homeschool, incorporate a lot of life skills for the kids, even down to the four-year-old. He's learning a lot of basic cooking right now, so. 
but I taught her the art of folding so you don't throw it all over yourself like I did earlier. And then just add a little bit more. Fold that in. And it doesn't have to be perfectly mixed. You just kind of want to get it in there so it's not, so it's mixing a little bit easier for you. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and dump the rest. Get this out of my way. We're just going to put the rest of this together and then we'll get working on that dough. So just get the rest of it all mixed together. You're going to have a nice, like, sticky dough. I know one thing that I had to do was put this onto my counter and kind of knead it to together like bread once I got it to a certain point and use my fingers. So you're going to want to take off any rings that you might have on your fingers because it's going to make a bit of a mess and have a wet rag handy to do that. But yeah, you kind of almost need to with this recipe, I'm getting flour everywhere. You're going to need to um, kind of knead it together like dough to get it all the way you want it, but it's gonna turn out to be a really nice sugar cookie when you're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll kind of show you what I'm doing and I'm already starting to make a mess. Let me clear my counter and then I'll come back and show you how to do this. I'm gonna regret trying to show you how to do this because I don't know if I'm gonna be able to shut off my camera when I need to, but you want to, I start inside the bowl because this is super sticky and super messy. And so I don't know if you've ever made like a a meatloaf this way, but it's kind of like folding a meatloaf. Maybe one of these days I'll show you my pinwheel meatloaf recipe. If my mom will clear it, because it was hers that she came up with and she is very protective of her recipe. But this is super sticky, so you want to make sure you have clean hands to do this, but you're going to need to get in there and really knead that flour into the dough because it is really, really sticky, you guys. So this is, I mean, it's gonna make a nasty mess for you. You're gonna, I don't know. If you have like an issue with like a sensory type issue of having sticky hands or anything, doing the recipe this way, it's definitely, it's a mess. But the recipe is well, well worth it in the end. All right, I'm gonna get my hands cleaned off and then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do next. The thing I do is I take some wax paper. Once I get it a little bit more formed, so it's gonna look a lot like this, you're gonna see some butter pieces in it. And I kind of take it and I'm gonna take part of it here and just throw it on the wax paper because it comes off really easily. And now it's starting to get more doughy, so it's a little easier to handle. And I'll use this piece in a minute here, so it's not going to be not going to be a waste to have pulled that out. I didn't measure quite right, but that'll be okay because we're going to make a couple of things of dough here. So first thing we're going to do is just kind of take the wax paper and mush it together. Be careful not to press too too hard because your wax paper will tear. And what we're trying to do is work the flour through this so it's not so sticky. And it's gonna be a little more sticky until after it's refrigerated, but you really wanna work those ingredients through. So kneading it like bread is honestly the best way to mix this dough. If you have a dough mixer, that would probably work too, but my dough hooks, disappeared quite some time ago. And I'm trying not to handle it with my hands too much and not tear the wax paper at the same time because it's just so sticky right now that it's, so I'm just kind of working it from side to side and pushing, but not too hard. For one, I want to be able to reuse this wax paper. And for two, I don't want to tear it and have to use more. So we're just going to kind of Handle it as little as possible with our hands at this point because for one, your hands kind of make the butter. It's gonna make the butter warmer so it's gonna get slimier real fast. And you don't want that. You want it to sort of kind of dough up like bread dough. Oh, I'm just, I'm gonna get dirty, it doesn't matter. Okay, so yeah, just keep kind of pushing and working those ingredients through until you start to see that butter disappear. 
and the flower disappeared through it. So kneading it really, really helps. At least I found it did when I made this recipe. And the original recipe does not call for this, but this seemed to work the best for me. To really get all those ingredients through. So if you don't have dough hooks, this is another way to do it completely by hand without a mixer and not need them. Oh, and I tore my paper anyway, but I think it's still usable. No, maybe not. Might be all she wrote on this one. But yeah, we're just back and forth mixing, and this will take a while. Just make sure you're watching. You'll see that butter disappear, and it'll really start to look more like a cookie dough through. I would not suggest using your rolling pin at this point because it's just, it's not ready for it. It will stick to it. I'm going to put this onto a new piece. I'm gonna actually cut some of this off and make some rolls of this. So I'm gonna use that original piece that I had and I'm just gonna grab, I don't really wanna cut through there. I'm gonna grab my, this is actually my lettuce knife. It's just one of those plastic knives. And I'm gonna to try to grab this dough the best I can. It's not working. Okay. I have to grab it with my hands a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. Okay. It's still so sticky. And this is why it has to go in the fridge, you guys, is because it just gets so sticky. So I'm just gonna ball it up. I'm gonna rinse off my hands a little bit. And I think. All right, so I think what we're gonna do, because it's still so soft, is I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator for a little bit. Um, I'm gonna grab another piece of wax paper and I'll save this one for later. And I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes to kind of get that butter a little bit harder than what it is. And get it off this ruined wax paper. So, and I went with a little bit bigger batch than I made the last time. Because like I said, I doubled this one. So it's a little bit harder to work with. Anyway, we're just gonna roll this up. And I'm just gonna press the wax paper along the dough. Stick this in the fridge. I'm gonna set the timer for about 20 minutes and I'm gonna come out and knead it when it's a little bit more firm and then we'll put it back in the refrigerator. I've had the dough in the refrigerator for a little bit now. It needs to chill for an hour, so we're gonna let it do that, but it did help to put it in the refrigerator for a bit so that I could knead it some more like bread dough. And then this is gonna need to chill for a full hour um, before we can roll it out and cut the cookies out. So. I'm gonna get that in there in a minute. I just wanna do a couple more swipes over, and then I'm gonna show you what we're supposed to do with it next. Yeah, it looks a lot better, and I'll bring that closer so you can see it. Is it another good? So it should have a texture and consistency like this, but this is what I'm working out are some of those butter streaks yet, so that that butter's worked all the way through when we cook. So I'm gonna get that done and then we'll roll it up. It's ready. Now what I'm gonna do to cut this is, I'm gonna use that lettuce knife again because it's plastic and it's just a lot easier. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and get a fresh piece of wax paper out. So I've got a fresh piece of wax paper out. So I'm gonna divide this into fourths for now and then I may roll this all together later. But what you're gonna do with this is you're just gonna kind of wrap it up and roll it a little bit. Once I have it kind of in the center where I want it, then I'm just gonna roll it out and kind of, I don't wanna work with this paper too much. I'm just going to I'm not have to touch it too much because it's, it's still pretty sticky. So I'm just gonna kind of turn it into a little 
more rectangular, or more like a little log or low. And then, and then I'm gonna wrap this up. And then stick this in the refrigerator and then we'll roll this out for cookies. So we're gonna make four of these. Date with my sugar cookie dough because last time I did like drops of sugar cookies this time I'm actually cutting out the shape so what I'm doing is I'm rolling it out about this big and then I'm cutting out the shapes in but when I'm rolling it out I'm putting a piece of wax paper on top and bottom because they seem to be coming up a little bit easier um, that would be my one suggestion that I have this put into four sections so putting them back in the fridge after you've used some of it, if it starts to get a little sticky, pull out another one. That's what I've been doing with them. And so far, I have this many little footprints about ready to go in, and I'm gonna sprinkle them with sugar on top. The other thing is make sure you preheat your oven to 375, and then they'll go in for about 10 to 12 minutes. Now for these cookies, because they're so tiny, I'm gonna err on the side of caution and do 10 minutes. So see how they turn these out. These did not turn out perfect. The cookies themselves are really, really good. So if you like a good sugar cookie recipe, this is a great sugar cookie recipe, but I've got to say, I don't like the mold very much on these little pitter patter feet. So that would be my thoughts on this brand of uh, cookie cutter. It was called Pitter Patter, and I picked it up at, I think, Party, Party City. But they really don't turn out the way they're supposed to. So this next batch that I have going, I kind of added a little divot to try to see if it would turn out. But yeah, they did not turn out. Most of them look like just little, little biscuits, so... Mm -hmm. 